Oh, well, love that sound. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 41 for February 9th, 2021, and it is National Pizza Day. That's why I have my Scott Pizza Tour. Nice. I'm in a New York state of mind. Um, shout out to Ed Brown out there. Uh, wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. As always, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Quick shout out to our Patreon supporter, Jason Schaefer. Thank you for being a cleanup hitter. And Cowboy Jack Durango on the power hitter level. We love you, Cowboy <laughs> Jack. I uh, hope you're out there. Yes, you are out there. Welcome, uh, Cowboy. If you'd like to be a Patreon supporter, uh, help us out at the Beer Baseball blog. Uh, please look up, us up at Beer Baseball. We also have an eBay store, which we're uh, giving 20% of our proceeds to support Fiber Mileage Network. Uh, people have actually been buying our uh, beer coasters and stickers and everything uh, right. on our Etsy store, so check that out. And here is the lineup card for today. First, he is the VP of Content Development for the Beer Baseball Blog, Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. Hey, Michael. Hey, Kevin. Hey, everyone. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, episode one of Beer and Break with Angelo. That was posted this past Saturday uh, where I uh, unboxed uh, a hobby box of 2020 Panini Elite Extra Edition. And spoiler alert, I pulled the Spencer Torkelson autograph. Yeah, so stay that's tuned nice. For, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for some uh, great uh, content coming down the pipe, uh, including dot, 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 non-baseball product. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's always fun stuff. Uh, that was a great video, too. You have, we have so many in our queue that um, uh, we're, we're way behind on that, so we'll definitely get those out to you. And uh, Top Series 1 uh, coming out next week, and we have some announcements about that as well. But next, he is the field correspondent and senior research analyst for the Beer Baseball blog, Kevin Lyon. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a great day here, even a little chilly for us wimps in California. But hey, football's done. It's almost time for baseball now. That's right. That's right. It is. Uh, I think it's moving day for a lot of teams. I've been seeing a lot of the moving trucks uh, ready to go to spring training. So um, yeah, it's a good time. Let's hope. Let's hope some minor league baseball is uh, oh, absolutely uh, on the uh, on deck this year. That's what I, I would definitely like. Uh, before we get into what are we drinking tonight, wanted to give a uh, shout out to the people in the chat. Obviously, uh, uh, Cowboy Jack Durango, uh, thank you for being here. Bubble Pug, so consistent. They can. Uh, they got the uh, Cal Ripken streak. A lot of people are, are really. Um, you know, following us and we really super appreciate it. Daily sports talk. Thank you for joining David. Always a pleasure to see you all angels podcast. Now, Angelo, uh, all angels podcast. You need to get with them. Yes. Uh, you didn't get with them this week, but, um, no. we'll talk about that with, uh, card wars. Uh, when you, uh, last year, when you, uh, got interviewed, you went on this winning streak, but, uh, who knows, you know, anything's possible this year. 2021 is a new, uh, new, uh, year. Uh, we said cowboy. Everybody's going crazy. Uh, Flobo boys from uh, I believe from San Francisco area. Yeah, Yankees. I I, I just have to do it with uh, pizza day. If I, I, w I wish I had my uh, Staten Island pizza rats. Yeah. I wish I, I would have gotten that hat. You can always go to Chicago too. Come on, uh, that's true. That's true. Let's get the Chicago New York pizza debate that's, going on. That's, you know? that's a good call. I, I I wanted to wear my 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 pizza tours actually um, to make more mention of this. So Scott's pizza tours is pretty special in in New York. I went to we went to Brooklyn. We mm. went to uh, where else do we go? We didn't go to Manhattan, and, um, but we went in the New York area. We went to like three like really distinct, awesome uh, New York pizza places. Yeah. Uh, Might have been four, but we went on the school bus, and the guy who who does it is actually um, he owns the uh, he has the Guinness Book of World Records for most pizza boxes. So he has pizza boxes from around the world, and he's a super cool guy, Scott. So yeah, uh, definitely, I hope yeah, it's Scott. Yeah, hey, and he's hey. a super cool guy, and uh, I think he's like on the Food Network and stuff like that. He might be on uh, some other places, but he's actually on YouTube too. And so uh, I would definitely check him out. Um, yeah, so uh, Brooklyn born, living in LA, nicely done. So thank you for joining us. Well, it's um, like and Ed, you know, yeah, Ed's out there, you know. 
and uh, the torque was amazing. So that that's that's nice to see as well. All right, so let's get into it. What are we drinking tonight? Uh, let's start <coughs> out with uh, Angelo Trinidad. All right, so tonight I'm enjoying from Strike Brewing Co. Uh, by way and courtesy of our field correspondent and senior research analyst, Kevin Lyon. Um, drinking their Big Wall Imperial Stout. So, guys, to be honest, totally out of my comfort zone with an Imperial yeah. Stout. Oh, um, however, uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, this one is... <laughs> On the can, it says 9% ABV, but on a yeah. tap, it says 10% ABV. <laughs> How, however, only 50 IBU. So right in my wheelhouse for IBU, and uh, the description on untapped says, an imperial stout aged in four roses bourbon barrel for one year. Bold flavors of oak, vanilla, and bourbon over a roasty stout base. And let me tell you, I, I, didn't, I did this unintentionally. But prior to jumping on this, I scarfed down three iced oatmeal cookies. And <laughs> this, with that, goes really good together. I can imagine. Oh, my God. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so he I texted see- me earlier in the week saying, you think I'll like this? And I'm like, because uh, he asked me, he was like, Guinness, Mike. It's definitely not like Guinness. This is, you know, way more powerful. But. Yeah, this this is uh, stouts. I mean, at least, at least for me, because like Kevin, you got me into stouts. My friend Phil um, uh, Cubber Lang is uh, he's actually very into stouts. So like uh, uh, those are like his go tos. Yeah. For me, stouts are like kind of more overpowering. I really enjoy tasting stouts in like tasters or you know mm-hmm. like the in the little um, what is it the four ounce glasses just so I can get like a taste of it. But like. Uh, I always say they're like, they're, they're go home beers. Um, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna go to sleep, you know, this is a nice one to, you know, it's like dessert. It's like, uh, uh, for me at least. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I see like, it says notes of espresso, dark chocolate and tobacco, uh, overwhelm the senses. So yeah, you're, you're definitely, you're in the, you're not only in the deep end, Angelo, I think you might be like in, in like the tar pits. Um, <laughs> He's in the green monster. Yes. And, yeah. and the thing is, too, is like people are really into stouts. It's not that these are strong. They get very pricey as well. You know, like sometimes you'll you know, I, there's some breweries that will charge like twenty five dollars for like a twenty two, like a twenty two ounce bottle of whatever bourbon barrel bourbon. Yeah. Bourbon barrel aged stout. Yeah. They'll have like different flavors, in it, whatever. And it's people are really into that stuff and collecting it. But again, you have to have a taste for it. And hope you like the stuff because. I made 25 bucks for a beer. I would really like to try it first, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you have one from Strike Brewing as well, Kevin. Yeah, because I still had some left. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is already like a month and a half old. So yeah, I have the Major Haze. It's a Hazy Pale Ale at 5.1%. I didn't see... Oh, 25 IBUs. So this is going to be pretty easy for me. I have my. I have one more of my big wall too next to me in case I finish that. I'll be, I'll be coordinating with Angelo after I finish this. And this looks like a pretty easy going uh, pale ale. It says it's a tribute to uh, mosaic hops and it has a uh, grain bill of vanilla malt, rolled oats, and white wheat. To create a light, slight, say slightly sweet. I can smell that. Body that highlights mosaics, wonderful tropical fruit, and bright citrus character. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's see how it yeah, is. Yeah. This was, I had this one um, when we you brought it over uh, like a couple months ago. Um, yeah. I mean, Strike It really, like, they, they do great beers. Um, I mean, we'll definitely have to make a pilgrimage out there uh, when all this is over. Um, the, what was it the San Jose Giants? I just found out the San Jose Giants is actually being managed by a guy named Len Sakata, yep. yes. um, who was on the 83 uh, Orioles World Series yep. team. So I, I was I was excited to see that. So we'll definitely have to make it out there. Um, you know, hopefully, God willing, if if uh, yeah. minor leagues and, come back. And for anybody who's in that area and not aware of it, it the Strike uh, Brewing location is actually about. I actually walked from the San Jose Giants game there. It's a little over a mile. So if you want to drive it, or if you want to just walk it, depending on what you're yeah. doing for the day, or just take a quick Uber, it's pretty easy to get there. You know. Yeah. You it's can, nice can. To have a ball. It's, I mean, it's not like the major leagues where we have a, you know, almost every stadium has a brewery close by, but this is as close as you'll get for minor league pretty much. Right. Right. We say walk there, stumble back. Yep. 
That's awesome. So um, I was I was actually in between two different beers today. Um, okay. I, I'm actually probably I'm gonna do this one for next time. Um, this is actually the Citra Hop. It's actually a Kirkland signature beer from Costco. Wow. So I'm actually gonna check this out. I, um, I'm just really? interested. I'm super interested in it. Um, did, did so you, I'll, did, I'll actually. Did you pick? Did you pick this up at Costco or? Um, it was actually it through um, what is it? Instacart. Uh, they oh, actually okay. delivered it. So, yeah, but so the so the, so the secret with with Costco for the Kirkland Signature brand, whatever brand is directly next to next to it is the is the brand that manufactures the Kirkland Signature. No kidding. Okay, that makes yes. sense. What? So for example, so for example, like for the diapers, we buy Huggies, but ne right next to Huggies is the Kirkland Signature. So Huggies also manufactures the Kirkland Signature. The, is that right? the, the yeah the Kirkland signature vodka is right next to uh the Belvedere. Belvedere makes oh, the, Belvedere. Bottles, the the Kirkland okay. signature vodka. I was so curious about that. I always hear Grey Goose. Okay. Yeah, so ne yeah, so next time I go to Kir uh, to uh, Costco I'll have to see what's next to that cuz it's manufactured by whatever's next. Okay, to yeah, that would be def I would definitely like to know that if you happen yeah. to go in the next That's week. Awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll have this for next week. We do have a friend, um, friend of the show, Scott Lost, who has the um, the hard seltzer version. It's where well, it's White Claw, but I'm curious if that's actually next to White Claw. If White Claw actually makes those too, you know, because there is a hard, there is a Kirkland hard seltzer brand, right? We've right. been putting over. He says it's good. There's some good stuff in there. But I decided to go with uh, this. Is, uh, there's the, it's the mix pack, um, and most of these that, that I've had before. Them. But I actually went with – there's one that's exclusive to this pack, which is the Stone Exotic Destinations IPA. Wow, I never heard um, of it. Nice. Yeah, it, a hop fuel uh, journey, uh, 7.5 ABV, 53 IBU, Citra, and the brand-new Tallis hops, which I'm not even familiar with. And then as I've had it, it actually has a very distinct taste to it. Um, it says huge floral aroma with notes of citrus and sweet fruit plus just the right hint of tartness. So uh, that is exactly what it is. And it's I think it's only exclusively in this mixed pack, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I'll yeah, probably look right there on the box. Nice. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably look on the on the uh, uh, Stone website. It'll probably be, you know, available yeah. there. But yeah. I know that it's only available in California. That I do know. Wow, that's good to know. It's, I didn't. Wow, it's a 24-ounce pack. It's a 24-ounce? Oh, my. A 24-pack. Wow. Well, 12, pack. 12, 12, 24, 12, 12, 12, 12, 24. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So re really, really good stuff. Okay. So let's get into it. This is right. this day in baseball history for February 9th, uh, coming up to baseball season. So a lot of, um, a lot of stuff coming up in this one, but we're going to start with actually a basketball story. Weirdly enough, February 9th, 1946, while coaching a hardy high school team in Arkansas, um, coaching their basketball team, Pirates uh, hurler Preacher Rowe suffers a fractured skull and a result of hitting the floor during an altercation with a referee. What? Yes. <laughs> what? The then 29-year-old Southpaw, who will report a month late to spring training suffering from headaches and dizzy spells, will post a 3-8 and eight record compiling a 5.14 uh, ERA before calling it quits uh, for the season in August. So this was the, wow. his demise. Now, Preacher Rowe was with uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers, right? Yeah. The, that's, always, that's what I always knew him for, being on the Dodgers. I had no idea he was on Pittsburgh. Yeah. I, I, in fact, when, when I saw this, I mean, everything didn't make sense. And I'm just like, wait a minute, is this even about Preacher Rowe? <laughs> so I had to look it up, and I, I guess it was. It was wow. very interesting. Um, oh, look at that. Cowboy Jack actually with some uh, knowledge about Kirkland oh, beer. Yeah, so he's um, yeah, I see. Yeah, so I found out a lot about Costco. There's actually a uh, a YouTuber that talks about Costco about learning the prices, like uh, you know, if if it has an asterisk on the card, if it has like a certain number, it's like the nine nine means it's like a regular item, and then I think nine yeah. seven means it's like no it's longer there. It's really interesting. Yeah. So the, Costco has like a lot of little secret things, like uh, almost like In and Out has like a secret little menu. Uh, February 9th, 1971, 50 years to go, uh, ago today, Satchel Paige becomes the first Negro League player to be nominated for the Baseball Hall of Fame. The right-hander, the oldest player in the major league, in, in the majors to make his major league debut at 
42 years and two days, became a legend during a, his professional career, which lasted from 1920 uh, until 1965, playing in several uh, different Negro leagues uh, and with the Indians, Browns, and A's. Now, Kevin, uh, you remember seeing uh, Satchel Paige in his prime, right? Uh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> he, was, he was also there for his rookie season. And his yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me, let me ask Angelo. Angelo, do you have knowledge of, of Satchel Paige? Uh, I mean, you probably have heard his name, but what do you know yeah. about him? Well, I, I mean, I know, I know of him. I know the history and the background, but you know, and, and what I've seen in, in highlights and stuff. But aside from that, you know, not too much. I did not know that he you know, was at the time the oldest person to debut in major leagues at, at 42. So that's a, a nice factoid to learn today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely uh, one of the all time greats, uh, trailblazer pioneer, if you will. So, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Kevin? What, what do you know about him? I mean, I knew that fact, but I really never, there was not really much to find out about him when you're growing up in the eighties, you know what I mean? And, and I don't that's know true. when he would have passed away. I'm guessing he probably was, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing he would have passed away in the eighties at the latest. I'm thinking if he was playing in 1920, he yeah. had to be born around like 1900 or so. I'd have to, as your senior research analyst, I'd have to look that up, you know? Yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know, but obviously I always, a Navy player to be able to pitch at that age yeah. in the major leagues at 42, come on. Are they like, no one's doing that now. The last guy was Jimmy Moyer to pitch in his forties, as far as I recall, or Bartolo. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, I mean, I remember when I was, you know, when I was young and just learning about baseball, I mean, his name would come up a lot, but it was, it was more in context of that, of the career that he could have had in the major leagues. Yeah. Um, almost like a Cy Young type of career, like pushing the 500 wins type of deal that, that he was that good, it, you know? So real quick, did you say he debuted in, Okay, he debuted in 26. Yeah, well, he was, I'm at the 20s. He did in, yeah, in 20s. Yeah. Yeah. He, he debuted in uh, 1926 for the Chattanooga Black Lookout. So even back then, they had the Lookout's name. Oh, wow. Interesting. How interesting. Yeah, so I'm totally. guessing that's why the, the minor league team has been the Lookout's for a long time, stemming from that. And um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so he was actually, yeah, he, he was born in 1906 and passed away in 1982. So he definitely... I got lost and he, he did kind of get lost in history, unfortunately, as did a lot of the Negro League players because there's obviously probably little of any footage at all of any of that. Right, right. And uh, he was one of those players also that had like that that lanky frame that he kind of like slung the ball in there, you know, um, and just just very effortlessly and, and yeah. uh, amazing. Uh, February 9th, 1976, the Hall of Fame Special Committee uh, on the Negro League, selects Oscar Charlton, considered by baseball historian Bill James to be the fourth best ball player of all time. The outfielder made the Sporting News list of uh, 100 greatest baseball players and was nominated as a finalist for the Major League Baseball All Century team in 1999. He was a, um, and as I looked, I, I, I really wasn't familiar with this name, but I mean, if we ever did a show on this guy, it would be, it would be robust because he was a player from 1915 to 1924. He was a player manager from 24 to 41 and he kept on managing from 42 uh, to 1954. So, yeah. and he also did scouting as well. And he was one of those uh, players uh, and obviously uh, worthy of hall of fame status and uh and and but yeah he, he was really super amazing and people um can't stop talking enough about him i'm actually going to post um we actually have a playlist uh from all these that uh of a references cool. that i forgot to put in here but i will uh pin it in a, in a minute here um but it actually has people talking about how great oscar charlton was so uh, definitely a, a player that we uh, definitely have to uh research February 9th, 1981, 40 years ago today, at age 37, Joe Morgan signs a one-year deal with the Giants, the uh, future Hall of Famer and member of the Big Red Machine teams that dominated the 70s, will play an additional season in San Francisco, winning the Silver Slugger Award for being the best offensive second baseman in the National League. Man, and he was already like good, like, what, 15 years in or so at that point, too. Yeah. And I yeah. remember, like, they had a pretty good run that year too. I think it was a it, sometime when he was with the Giants, they had a good run there. 
Yeah, he hit a really uh, key home run. I think it was in one of the last games of the season. Yeah. I don't know if it either 81 or 82 that knocked out the Dodgers. So uh, that would have been 82. Would have been 82. Yeah, it would have yeah. been 82. Um, but yeah, he he uh, definitely made his mark. And unfortunately, it passed away at the end of last year. Yeah. February 9th, uh, 2001, 20 years ago today, after 13 months of negotiations, Derek Jeter and the Yankees finalized a $189 million 10-year contract. The deal makes the All-Star shortstop second, owing to Alex Rodriguez, $252 million for 10 years as the highest paid player in history of the sport. Now, um, this is kind of fun because um, my story continues after this story. Um, I want to ask, are, yeah. are we going to talk about uh, Mien, Mien T. K. 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 <laughs> That's Mankiewicz. Mankiewicz. <laughs> I actually Mankiewicz. weirdly know how to pronounce that name. Yeah. So the T uh, is silent? I, yeah, who knows? I mean, he has way too many consonants in there. I take, you need to give a couple back. It's the old, like, um, Dave Gitsepcion, where, like, it's actually curved. It's like, yes. too your name's too long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, more on uh, A-Rod and Jeter in, uh, in a minute. Uh, but February 9th, 2006, a jury deliberating for a little more than four hours rules that the Angels did not breach a contract with the city of Anaheim when the ball club changed its name. 13 months, months ago, the team known as the Anaheim Angels became the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I know you guys like to hear that. That rolls right off the tongue. Oh, yeah. Uh, prompting the city where it plays to file a lawsuit claiming the change in name amounted to at least a hundred million dollars in lost revenue. Wow. Okay. Really? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Were they getting something from every purchase of Anaheim angels merchandise? I mean, I don't know how that, how's that work? Yeah, that's, it's kind of a gray area, but I mean, worth a shot, I guess. I'm, oh, I'm not geez. sure. Angela like, did. You know, Anaheim was going broke, you know, in 2006. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Uh, do, do you like the Anaheim Angels? What would you want them to be, Angelo? You know, I don't know, man. Like, um, I like, I really like California Angels. Yeah, that was that's that's my my all time favorite Angels logo, and that's kind of what you know. That's kind of how I remembered them growing up. Um, I don't really remember too much about the time period of Anaheim Angels, and then I started getting into baseball. Again, you know, as they made the you know, transition into, I, mean, I don't remember much about that logo and those unis. When I moved down here, they were they already transitioned to the new style uniforms, but as the Anaheim Angels. Yeah. But I agree with you. Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim is definitely doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I think it's, um, I understand why they had to make the move from a business standpoint. Because Anaheim isn't really known for anything except for Disneyland, um, so you know. But they, the Ducks were around. The Ducks have been around for a decade at that point too, though. You know, not yeah, that the Ducks yeah. are such a big thing either. But yeah, I just more looked yeah, like the logo. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think it's really. Yeah, I think it's really just you know, just uh, being able to say, "Hey, we have two teams in a major market of Los Angeles," right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it, it came down to marketing, advertising, um, and, and making it more appealing to the mass public who doesn't really know what where Anaheim is or what, what it does. I mean, people still probably think to this day that, you know, the drive from Angel Stadium to Dodger Stadium is a hop, skip, and a jump. And huh. we all know that's not the case. Yeah. It's not even close. I mean, yeah. you got that, you know, from part of the, I'm like, okay, San Francisco and Oakland are literally right next to each other. And I'm like, what would they call, what would happen if they called them the San Francisco A's? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and this yeah. was, it, this was during their Disney days. So you, you talk yeah. about the ducks. This is when the, the Disney owned the angels. Right. So, yeah. and then the angels in the outfield and all that stuff. So it kind of makes sense, but, um, but, but yeah, I, the Cal actually weirdly, um, I'm going to use this analogy, but uh, I, when the when the uh, Cardinals uh, came from uh, the football Cardinals came to to uh, Phoenix um, uh, from St. Louis, they they were the Phoenix Cardinals at the time. This was like in '88, and 
what they did was they changed it to the Arizona Cardinals because, and I thought it was a good, uh, uh, solid marketing plan was they go, we want people from Tucson. We want people from Pla yeah. Flagstaff, which were, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, you know, north and south of Phoenix. We we want to include Arizona. I think you're right in that because California includes anybody who doesn't have a team, right? You know, yeah. I think that's a that's a solid move. Um, and but they went with marketing, and, and I can I can understand why. I mean, like yeah. you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you know, they went they went for it, and it, it's it is what they're well, what they're doing. I well, and eventually they cut off the the of uh, Anaheim part. I'm like, and you, you knew that that was going to happen. They were going to yeah. drop that eventually. You know, and, and I'm biased because I grew up when they're the California Angels, so I prefer all that. But I understand, you know, like someone like why are they California Angels? You know, and there's so many other teams in California. Like the Arizona thing, that's great because there's no other team. Yeah, now. that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. You know, yeah, same but with Cal the, Cal uh, Cal California is the second largest state by population. And there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's and, yeah. you know, in, in country. So. To Mike's point, of the, I mean, so many people that don't have teams are in between fans that are, you know, Fresno Grizzlies fans. Okay, who are they rooting for? Are they rooting for San Francisco? Are they rooting for Oakland? Are they rooting for the Angels? Who are they rooting for? Yeah. Bakersfield? Who are they rooting for? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I get, I get all sides, but yeah, I mean, and I agree with you guys 100% that eventually the Anaheim is going to be dropped from it, and that'll be a sad day for me. Yeah. Well, well I think it already has. No, I think it, that secretly happened already. As far as I know, I never heard him, I never hear him referred to as the Los Angeles Angels Anaheim anymore. Yeah. Well, you don't. They they, got you, rid of that. you don't. But you don't. You, they don't. But but they do, right? It's on all. It's still on all the, um, uh, the schedules and the advertising and stuff like that. But eventually, it will be dropped for sure. Yep. So ironically, um, on the same day that Jeter got his uh, big payday uh, in two thousand one. On February 9th, 2009, oh, Alex oh, Rodriguez, two days after the story breaks on SI.com, admits to and then apologizes for his use of performance-enhancing drugs when he played shortstop for the Rangers from 2001 to 2003. Now, mind you, this is the only time he did it, I'm of sure. Course. <laughs> in a, in of course. In an exclusive interview conducted on ESPN, the Yankee superstar acknowledges using PEDs hoping to fulfill the expectations after signing the 10-year, uh, $252 million contract with Texas. Um, uh, here, here is uh, A-Rod uh, taking a hard look in the mirror at himself and making that decision. Um, and, uh, and remember, everyone, this is what happens when you take shortcuts, shortcuts to the top. Um, I'm kidding. Um, actually, 696 home runs is what happens when you take shortcuts. Whoa, hot take. <laughs> hey, or what about uh, how many other bonds have? You know, how many bond does Barry Bonds have? You know, seven. Hey, let, let's 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 keep the let's keep okay. the hate to to A Rod here. Okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Barry, <laughs> bonds, hard. Barry Bonds did not know that was sitting on the chair when he sat down on it. Okay, he accidentally <laughs> yeah. sat on it. And, well, and it happened more than once. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> lightning, lightning chair. can strike twice. <laughs> yeah well i mean we'll we'll continue to rib uh a rod whenever we can um so uh look, look forward to that in future episodes <laughs> it's an easy all right yeah. Here, here's a fun one i can't i can't wait to do this we're gonna we're gonna end with this one but this one is is uh you're gonna you're gonna like this one angelo because we're i, I want to see how much you know about this i know uh, kevin and i live this uh pretty much every time we talk oh, no. um or talk about like anything this related February 9th, 2010, Greg Gagne is selected to the uh, as the 22nd member of the Minnesota Twins Hall of Fame. The light-hitting shortstop known for his defensive prowess uh, spent all of his 10-year tenure, tenure with uh, the Twins. Uh, Gagne once hit two inside the park uh, late-season home runs in the same game. On October 4th, 1986, I couldn't believe that they're still playing in October, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, that, that game was at the Huber H. Humphrey Metrodome. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to see if Angela knows about this. There's actually two uh, two people with the same name. Are you familiar with the, the man on the right? Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne, not Greg Gagne. Now, um, incredibly... Uh, in the 80s, for those uh, watching, uh, there's a man, another man um, 
in Minneapolis with the same name, but they, they pronounce it differently. So it's Greg Gagne and Greg Gagne and Greg Gagne being uh, the wrestler. And they actually look kind of uh, similar here, which is kind of, uh, kind of interesting. So I'm going to put the question out there. Who is the bigger star? Okay. Uh -oh. Well, let's make a case um, uh, for a Greg Gagne. So before we talk about him and what he, what Greg Gagne did in the Metrodome, um, let's get you to, up to speed who he is. Um, he is the son of legendary pro wrestling father named Vern Gagne, um, who most and, and most notably won the AWA World Tag Team Championship with Jumping Jim Brunzel. This is pre Killer Bees. Um, their uh, their tag team name was the High Flyers, right? Right, Kevin. Yes, sir. Okay. And on April 20th, 1986, so Greg Gagne um, uh, and, and, well, Greg Gagne hit the two uh, inside the park home runs in 86. Yes. But but on, in April, uh, in front of 23,000 people at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, Gagne wrestled in a main event cage match at an AWA event called Wrestle Rock. Yep. So here he is. Uh, uh, a knee off the ropes. Uh, Ganya and Superfly Snuka uh, took on and defeated King Kong Brody and Nord the Barbarian. Uh, as a result, Greg's dad, Vern, got five minutes in the cage with the hated manager, Sheik Adnan LKC. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot to untangle there. There's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> going on here. Dad, and, it, and it gets even more tangled. <laughs> okay, so in 1986, the Super Bowl champions oh, no. uh, were the uh, Chicago Bears. So a beautifully so tragic thing happened as a result of Wrestle Rock. Um, the 80s were all about MTV videos and creating oh. content, which would be considered oh. viral today. And in 1986, the Super Bowl Shuffle was created by the Super uh, for the by the Chicago Bears. Thank goodness they won, or else this would be even more of a disaster. Um, but Russell Rock, of course, created their own version. I love how uh, we're talking this, about this, by the way, because this is of, like of one of the, my all-time favorite things ever. Yeah, they they did the Russell Rock Rumble, and it is hilarious for all the wrong reasons, and must yep. be seen to be believed. And here is Greg Gagne uh, um, uh, at the mic. Um, yeah, he uh, did his little version of it. Um, and I'm going to, oh, yeah. I'm going to, right before we do the baseball card wars, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do the playlist. It is in the playlist, both the Super Bowl shuffle and, uh, the Russell rock rumble. And you, it, you, you will get a laugh out of it for sure. Um, so I would say oh. this is probably the peak of Greg Gagne's career. Um, <laughs> and, but Greg Gagne by comparison, um, was a member of the twins world series championship in 87 and 91, both won in the Metrodome. So I think he wins. <laughs> and, it, and it is interesting because, you know, you mentioned Greg Gagne, the wrestler, his dad, Vern had been wrestling in Minneapolis for like 25, right. 30 years. Right. So I'm sure poor Greg Gagne. Paul, he came to the twins not having any idea. Then all of a sudden he's like, why is everyone getting my name wrong? You know, it's just like, no, it's Gagne. It's like, no, aren't you gone? You like the wrestlers? Because they were an institution in, in Minneapolis. That's right. Not recently, for sure. And like, it, it couldn't, he couldn't have played anywhere else. He had to play in Minneapolis, you know, yeah. like big stars and, and uh, probably it's overshadowed. Why is, but why is the eight of, why is that group? The AWA was dying up came, you know, the twins, you know, that's right. That's right. It was all about that time. So it's kind of very interesting. So, uh, Angela, you, you remember the, do you remember that well, or. I love wrestle rock rumble is like one of my all time favorite videos in the history of all videos. It's so good. It's so it's good. Not good. It's not good. No, that's what no, makes it great. So, no, it's so good, man. It's so good. Man, we need, to, we, 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 we need to make a we need to make a bear baseball blog rumble or something. Oh, that would be that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm actually um, yes. Let me uh, no. just give me give me a second here. I'm actually going to share this now. Now this is required watching for everybody on the bear baseball blogcast mm -hmm. right now. But uh, I want to tell you, you cannot watch it now. You have to watch it after the show, and I, I will post it here um oh, in the comments yeah but yeah you killer please ken resnick. killer ken resnick is you know oh yeah oh he's out gosh. of control that guy's out of control the, mid, the midnight rockers the midnight well, rockers I think the, the, so best, 
the best rapper was Nick Bockwinkle, who's like in his 50s. You know? Right, for sure. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, he's like the smoothest rapper. Because that's how I think we mentioned. Everyone is rapping their parts. And it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Midnight Kanye Rockers are in it. Scott Hall, yeah. Kurt Hennig. Um, and actually, oh, one of the I lines... I forgot that, about Big... I forgot about yeah. Big Scott Hall in that video. Yeah. Oh my God. Larry Zabisco, yeah. uh, Nick Bockwinkle yeah. raps. Um, yeah. Jerry Blackwell doesn't rap. He actually just reads. Um, yeah. But but uh, I, one of uh, Greg Gagne's line is, uh, I'm Gagne and I'm in a rage. I want Brody and I want him in a cage. So right. yeah, please, please, <laughs> please watch it. It is uh, definitely required watching um, and, and fun stuff. It's so good. So that is February 9th. Uh, let's get to baseball card pack wars. Here are the standings. Uh, Kevin, l- l- really running away with it. Now, I, I wanted to make this uh, announcement that next week, hopefully, God willing, we will have a uh, top series one in our hands and we're going to be potentially breaking it for two weeks straight. We're going to uh, wait, wait, play. Wait. You mean 2021 top series one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, it, it's going to be fun. We're going to do it a lot like we did our uh, last show of the year where we're going to have different rounds and the different rounds uh, are worth different points. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, Angelo uh, only has one win at this point, but hey, he could be leading uh, by next wow. week very easily. Yeah. Wow. How dare you? But that's, that's just arrogance yeah, well, right there. One win and number one in everybody's heart. <laughs> exactly but but look i'm not doing much better I, I have 15 losses as well but kevin really doing well um yeah you really, know we'll see so hopefully i can jinx that here are the baseball I'm card i'm old i'll peter mm-hmm. out Don't worry, exactly exactly uh kevin's sprinting but it's a marathon for sure uh here are the here are the pack wars rules we'll walk you through them uh if you watch before you you kind of know what we're doing here um so let's get to it. I'm going to, uh, you know, Kevin, you're you're in the lead, so why don't you go first? Let me uh, let me switch this out. All right, booyah! All right, we'll start with uh, 2020 tops big league baseball. Let's see, what we got here. I feel like almost every time I open this, I always have like that little spot right there. I feel like I'm gonna ding something. Like, oh yeah. no. Oh, Daily Sports no. Talk. Uh, Daily Sports Talk uh, said they opened some today. Great product. So yeah, I'm looking forward. Right to that. I've seen a c- couple things. So we're we're looking for it. Yeah, Bubble All Pug. Right. Let's see those Brewers. Oh yeah, let's see. Hopefully we get starting off with uh, Nico Goodrum. This is a cool looking card here, even though it's Carlos Correa. You know, we have uh, Clayton Kershaw. Uh, 2019 National League home run leaders. Unfortunately, it's Pete Alonso. No Brewers. So I was like, it's Pete Alonso, Eugenio Suarez, and Cody Bellinger. We have Nick Senzel. Flipping out insert is Max Muncy. Orange parallel is Shane Biba. We got Fernando Tatis Jr. Aaron Savali. Sorry, I'm losing my cards here. And lastly, Marcus Semien, who I believe just signed with the Blue Jays, I believe. Uh, I think I think he did he get traded? Or no, he might have signed. He might have signed. I'm thinking of Chris yeah, Blue Davis. Blue Jays making a lot of deals in the offseason. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to be a dangerous team for sure. But that AL East, oof, that's going to be rough. Uh, yes, uh, Cardinal fan since uh, 10 years old. But a baseball fan uh, since uh, I was born. So, Angelo, go for it. All right. Big League Baseball 2020. I'm actually really excited about the design of Big League Baseball 2021, which is Me too. Coming, oh, already in, seen it. Which right is on. coming in June. Yeah, it's coming in June. Daniel Vogelbach. Jonathan Shoop. Shoop, Shoop, Bay Doop. Bryce Harper. Salvador Perez. Harold Ramirez, Joel Lugo, Orange Parallel is Sim Su Chu. Uh, flipping out an insert, Rafael Devers. We have award winners, first baseman Pete Alonzo and Alex Bregman. Ah, nice. No brewer. No, no brewers. brewers. Oh, got a cool gift. For, well, d- Mongo like candy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What did All you right. say? Uh, he had a gift for me. Oh, and awesome. uh, my response, uh, Mongo, Mongo like candy. 
Long goal. So, oh, oh wait, wrong one. Uh, big League Baseball. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Get a brewer. Right. Uh, oh, Aroldis Chapman uh, winning the Mariano Rivera's uh, Reliever Man. of the Year Award. So that's an interesting card. Interesting haircut as well. <laughs> uh, Rowdy Telez. Uh, Max Scherzer. Dallas Keuchel. Kyle Schwarber. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that was the game I was at. This is pretty, pretty like amazing. Every, every card of his involves that game celebration. I know. I, I don't know. I, wish it, I, I seem to hope it was, but it looks like he, it, it, I know it's uh, sunflower seeds, but it looks like he's like uh, has bees on him or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the bees. That's exactly. Evan, Evan Longoria. Yeah. Uh, sketch card. The orange parallel is the recently retired Howie Kendrick. Uh, George Springer. Uh, <laughs> crazy enough. I hope they're different numbered. How oh. can Wow, that's weird. Yeah, it is. And uh, Gio Ursula. Gosh, you got two of the same guy. At least that'd be a brewer. Come on. Yeah, for real. Hey, uh, no brewers in that oh, one. I, 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 ran in, I ran into the same thing in one of the, the beer and breaks that's coming up. Yep. Uh, and it's uh, definitely not two Howie Kendricks. So I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not off to a good start here, so you guys have a good shot here. 236 is my high card. Ooh. I saw you guys have a highlight, and those highlights are some of the higher number cards in the set. Yeah, that's what I'm finding out. Pete Alonso, so. 271. Ooh, yeah. I think that, that won for me one time. Uh, now, is that a award winner? Is that the, you, no, that's the highlight, right? Just the regular award card? Winner, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. So my award winner is uh, Aroldis at 278. Oh, uh, there you go. So, all right. So one for me. Uh, wait, are, are we doing her heritage? Heritage, heritage minor league. Yeah. We have heritage, heritage minor, league. minor league. So this is yeah. uh 2020 heritage minor league baseball. Eight cards in here. Um, again, we love oh, the minor. You have an insert. Oh, that's true. Uh, oh, this is, these are interesting. These ones look. Yeah. What, are these a seventy-one? Uh, right? 70, yeah, I believe so. Yes, seventy-one. So this is twenty nineteen game one IL. Uh, the it's a highlight card of like the series. Bobby yeah. Bradley's home run league. lifts the Clippers. This very interesting card. Yeah, I don't know what the IL is. I just it's international league. League. international league. That would make sense. Yeah. Okay, uh, Miguel Vargas from the San. Uh, I mean the. Not the uh, San Jose Rancho. Quakes. I want no, Rancho, Rancho Cucamonga Cucum Quakes. There you go. Sure. Uh, strikeout leaders uh, for 2019 minor league. Can you – I need to know teams, please. Uh, Wilmington Blue Rocks, Montgomery Biscuits, and Erie Seawolves. Ah, oh, rats. No, not, unfortunately, no, no brewers there. Nick Madrigal uh, from the uh, uh, Columbus Knights. Charlotte Knights. Uh, Charlotte Knights. What? Charlotte, Charlotte Knights. Knights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the Harlem Knights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, Royce Lewis. That he should be up for uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, no, no. Uh, Minnesota. Sorry. The Pensacola Blue Wahoos. Yes, I Pensacola believe. Blue Wahoos. That, that's the game that was doing the gimmick of you could rent the stadium for a camp out, right? Right, right. The right. uh, Down East uh, Wood Ducks, which another yeah. team I love. Sherston uh, Apostle. I've heard of him. He's doing uh, Braden Shoemake. Uh, with the uh, is it the Mississippi Braves? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. I'm like, you saying his name wrong? It's Showmake, not Showmaker. I've never heard that as a name <laughs> before. Yeah, Shoemake. I'm, I'm actually waiting on two <laughs> autographs from him, the redemptions that I'll never get. Uh, <laughs> I and Ivan Herrera from the uh, is it the JC card? Oh, Palm Beach Cardinals, which actually I don't think they're the Palm Beach Cardinals anymore, I think they're something else now. Okay. We have to catch up with all the minor leagues. Yeah. All right. Who's uh? Let's let's go with Angela. All right. Okay. Come on, Angela. Not good. I had to back up beer, and I might not even get to it. I said I had one of the stouts ready to drink with you if we need it, but. All right. So we got Luis Patino from the Amarillo Sud Poodles. Yep. We have uh, Alexander Canario from the Salem. Kaiser Volcanoes. Uh, Unfortunately, that team is no longer major league affiliated. Yeah. 
We have Aaron Ashby from the Carolina Mudcats. We finally have a brewer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, right. Huzzah. Huzzah. Cheers. Right. We have from the um, Tri City Valley Cats, Gray Kessinger. Uh, I've never seen one of these cards before. Oh, it's numbered. Uh, so Ooh. it's um, it's a white parallel. Oh, I'm uh, yeah. Mason uh, Martin from the Bradenton Marauders, and it's yeah, numbered fifteen. It's numbered fifteen to fifty. Right on. Cool. Very that's cool. an awesome card. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. And it's a, the the stock feels a little bit thicker than the regular mm -hmm. cards. From the uh, Clinton Lumber Kings, Cameron Misner or Meisner. Mm -hmm. Nicer, yeah, yeah, I know that's another team I think that gotten uh, yeah. Yep. yeah, but they're in the new league that, that's coming around from the yep. Frisco Rough Riders. We have a uh, Leody Tavares, mm -hmm. Frisco Rough Riders. That's where Victor Rojas left to be the general manager. Oh, that's right, president. that's right, yep. Yep. yeah, president GM. Yep, we'll miss him in Anaheim, but hey, good for him getting that gig, yeah. And from the, from the Akron Rubber Ducks, Tristan McKenzie, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, I like these cards a lot. They're super yeah. cool. All right, let's see what let's see what we got here. All right, all right. I'm starting up here with uh, Drew Waters from the Gwinnett Stripers. From the, I believe it's is it Jacksonville. Yeah, the Jacksonville yep. Jumbo Shrimp. This is Jazz Chisholm. Wow, yeah, it's, it's such a great name, though. Yep. Okay, we got from the Pensacola Blue Wahoos, Jordan uh, Balasovic. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Look at this guy. Look at that guy right there. Oh, awesome. Nets. <laughs> Mr. Tim Tebow. That's funny. Uh, from the – oh, friends of the show, the Marital Beach Pelicans, we got Braylon Marquez. Nice. They were uh, part of the Beer Baseball Blog interview series. You go yep. through our uh, – our videos on our YouTube page, you can find that. From the Hudson Valley Renegades, we got Greg Jones. Oops, got to be careful here. From the uh, Daytona Tortugas, Jose Garcia. And from the Mississippi Braves, William Contreras. Nice. All right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what brewer? They Man. Yeah, the, the minor league teams are great. They, I mean, they do a lot of marketing around all these, so uh, they come up to try to get more, uh, more, it's more outrageous, and they're super fun. Uh, actually, there's a there's a, a team this year. Uh, they're independent, uh, but they're the uh, sock puppets. <laughs> I thought that was the league. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's the process. I think all the teams are renaming themselves. Yeah. See, everything changed around. I think it was around the time the Mudcats came around. The Carolina Mudcats we mentioned earlier. They could be it was in that name in like the late 80s, and all of a sudden they were selling gangbusters on yeah. Burt. Yeah. So that's where everyone started going crazy of names because yeah. obviously you're gonna make more money if you sell more merch. You yeah. Because when I saw the Hartford Yard Goats, that was kind of when I first yeah. saw that kind of blow up. Uh my Nick Madrigal is uh 215. Oh, 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 wow. so oh, so 172 Angelo? is my 172. 172. Yeah. Cameron, I'm in third um, place in again, Minnesota. 165. Oh wow! I, I'm I only the only 200 here. Two, That's interesting. Yeah, okay. I don't know, wow. Maybe we got a couple 200s in that set. So I, I only think it goes up to like 225 or so. But wow. Okay. So so this is where I this is where I usually blow it when I have a 2-0 lead and I come up with the steps. Wow. Um, you already got two points <laughs> out of here. Um, I'm gonna go the end of the entire year. Come on, just today. That's enough. I'm going to go with outfielders. Okay. All right. So I reach my. Why don't you friend. isolate yourself for this, please? What's that? Why don't you switch to you instead of me? Because you're going to be opening this up first. Oh. Oh, that's true. Duh. Thank you. No one needs to see me that big. It's funny. I, I was looking at the screen and seeing you, and I'm just like, oh, I definitely should. All right. Here we go. No. Oh, okay. So I have uh, only four cards with tops uh -oh. chrome. Is that so, 2020? It is. It is. Okay. It is. is. It? I, I don't yep. even see it on 2020 on here. This is yeah, interesting. 20, okay. That one's 2020. Okay. I'll go with that. All right. So let's do it. Here, though, right, Angelo? 
Kiki. Okay. This is a pretty high end back, right? Okay. So uh, Jose Abreu uh, says first base. So obviously this, I think this is a, yeah, not it. Uh, Robbie Ray, oh. a pitcher. So I'm 0 for 2. Nico Horner on the variation, uh, second baseman and shortstop. Oh, nice. So That's cool I'm not going to do well here. I don't have anything. And, of course, I picked the wrong one. He's a first baseman, Ed, Edwin Rios, the Dodgers. Wow. Cool Woo. cards, but not uh, – um, Well, nothing, yeah, you not, picked the step. You well, I'm you, out. So I'm out. Who wants to go shot. next? You called your shot. Who do you want to go next? Oh, Y'all go next. That way I can okay. go last. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we can build anticipation, right? All right. So I got 2020 Allen and Ginter. Nice. So, Colin, there have been a couple, like, luchador-inspired things for the Copa de la Vergione run by the minor leagues. This is a minor league, like, Lucha Libre-themed names that they've been using, but yep. nothing, like, on a full-time basis. All right. This one doesn't have positions. Oh yeah, I guess I can guess by. Right. <clears throat> uh oh. All right, so first one. Right. Yeah, so first one. First one is Anthony K. Pitcher, Toronto Blue Jays. So we got. Um, this is Fernando Tatis Jr. He's an outfielder, right? Infielder. Infielder. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> so we got. Good try. Mike, Mustak Mike Mustakis. I believe he's third base, right? Yeah, infielder. Yeah. This guy I know for sure is an outfielder. Yes. Vladimir Guerrero. Ah, technically DH. Yeah. No. Just go ahead. Yeah, he's an outfielder. Expos. Yes. Nice drive. Yep. Uh, so we got uh, uh -oh. Detroit Tigers. Crown zone. The Crone Zone. Crone I missed the Crone. We got uh, Jermaine Dye from the Kansas City Royals. That should be an outfielder. I think so. Yep. He is. Yep. And then my mini card <clears throat> is a baseball writer, Derek Gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think, he, I think he's with, uh, with, with St. Louis. Wow. And then um, my Reach for the Sky insert is One World Trade Center. Wow. wow. Interesting. So how many? Well, and again, to you got two. Alan and Gint yeah, Alan and Ginter are known for having um, non-baseball yeah, yeah. player cards, uh, pop culture, as well as these cool inserts. The, the, the Reach for the Sky are like a skyscraper. It's a skyscraper mm -hmm. insert. Yeah. Alan and Ginter Chrome has uh, Safari mini cards, as well as a bug, uh, a bug insert as well. So That's right. Kind of, yeah. kind of, kind of a unique set, but actually one of my favorite sets. This and Gypsy Queen, I think, are my two favorite uh, top secondary sets, and obviously Chrome is my favorite. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got these are beautiful looking cards. If you guys yeah. remember back uh, when this first was released, I entered a pack war uh, on HOFBC, and I won a, a hot pack, which is all uh, foil yeah. cards, and I won the entire box. Yep. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Jermaine Dye, uh, when he was with the White Sox, uh, had this like amazing catch during like Mark Burley's perfect game. So yep. uh, that's where I remember him. So Kevin, you're up. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Alan Ginter. There you go. Uh oh, I got to do my homework too. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what was the Sacramento team called? Um, River Cats. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, for the, the, um, oh, they're like the uh, Mascarados. I think, or I something thought, like I that. Thought I thought it was something different. You know, I didn't think oh, it was maybe that. it was. Yeah, let me look it up. Yeah, right. but there was more than that, though. There was a couple. There was a couple of those. Uh, let's see. What we got here. We got Mr. Corey Seager, Nolan Ryan, Dorados, the That's Sacramento. Right. Yeah, That's yeah, Dorados. And the logo, if you see it, it's like a, a it's like a, a, a the lucha mask. mask. Yeah, yeah. there was a couple of those, but that's the only one I can remember off the top of my head here. Let's see here. We got uh, Mike. Oh, we got Fulty. Yeah. Mike continue it, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm over three so far. Uh oh. Let's see here. We got Charlie Blackman. So I'm trying to remember. Wait, was he first or was he outfield? I'm trying to remember. 
Ah, uh, yeah, right. I remember that, right? I'll look it up. I think he is. Uh, I'll look it up. I at least could show up. He got the dad. I got the son. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice my, outfielder. Nice done. Yeah, he's Lock, an outfielder. Lock, 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 okay, so I'm at two now with Vlad Jr. So I'm at two. That's what I thought. Uh, next, we got uh, Luis Aparicio. So I got a few yeah, Hall of Famers definitely here. Definitely an infielder. Yes, shortstop. For the All right. <laughs> Literally uh, and figuratively. Yeah. Oh, uh, here's my mini, Tony Perez. Yeah. That's nice. Hall of Famer. Yeah. God, I got like three Hall of Famers in this pack. Right on. Nice. And. Um, down, down on the farm, corn, the corn stalk. Yes, corn, corn. Yeah. King corn. King corn. Oh, that's funny. But uh, unfortunately, that's not an out. Guys, I, that could be an outfield, but that's not an outfield. <laughs> that's funny. In, uh, I learned the technicality, but that's two. Yeah, in, in the field of dreams, it's it's definitely an outfield. Yeah, that's why I was trying to work it. You know, like, so, Angelo, did you get that one? I got two. So did yeah, I. So he had two. Oh, so, okay. So you guys so we go. So we go playoff. big low card. Yeah, big. Yep, big, big, big low card. card. Oh goodness, that's my big league. All right. Are we gonna go at the same time or what? How are we gonna do this? Um. Yeah. Go for go for same time. Hopefully, we find a brewer. Is yeah. I'm I'm way too sober. So we're just so, so we're just looking for brewers and low card for time. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you get an autograph or a relic. You know, we've gotten a couple. I mean, I've gotten two autographs from these. All right, let's see. Chris Bryant, Austin Meadows, Clayton Kershaw. So no Brewers. Yeah, I, I – hold on. Yeah, I got no – wow, no Brewers for me either. Ugh. What the heck is going on? I got uh, Mike Trout, 274. Well, we're going low card, aren't we? Low oh, card. Low card. Yeah, right low card for this. Sorry, this 10%. Uh, my oh, my, oh, I got uh, all right. Well, I got D Gordon 13. Oh, that's I got tough. Jose Urquidy. Oh, ah, picks up two. Angel gets a dose for that. Nicely one. done. Nicely not done. Enough. You guys both got two. I got zero. So, wow. All right. All, all right. right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so uh, Angelo uh, coming up, coming up in the world to. Uh, so we're both we're both we're both two and two on that. Uh, Kevin own four. Yeah, own four. Yes, sir. Tough day. Tough womp, day. Womp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have some fun with series one uh, next week. Definitely uh, watch that, and we're going to do it the whole show and uh, have a lot of fun with it. So let's get to some baseball trivia. Um, let's test your knowledge. Definitely in the comments, we want to know uh, if you know the. Year, we're looking for oh. the year of this. Oh. This is the Reds oh. and Marlins. Wow, Reds and Marlins. What year is this? And uh, special, um, extra added, no value bonus points if you can guess the day that this was. <laughs> okay, no pressure, no pressure. But, but we're looking. We're looking for the year. I doubt you'll get the day. <laughs> So let's see who we got here. Obviously, Griffey Jr. on the Reds. So right. that kind of a little hint. But Brandon then Phillips. Votto, I'm like, wow, Votto. How long yeah. Votto been in the league, you know? The it's underrated it's slugger it's Adam Dunn yeah. in left field, not at first base. Yeah. Well, Votto's playing first. That's Votto's why. Votto's there. Votto's in. I was saying, that's a young Votto. Yeah. If you look, uh, Luis Gonzalez is no longer a Diamondback. He's on the Marlins. I'm assuming this is after. This is yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. You're right. Um, Otherwise, I'm like that Marlins lineup is pretty lackluster. Yeah, and Hanram is. Uh, yeah. You know, that's that's. Uh, I remember he was playing at a game, and uh, he came over, and then next thing you know, he's traded. I remember. Well, that. Well, I never even heard of Mike Jacobs, and he's their cleanup hitter. Yeah, right. <laughs> and playing first base. Of, I never. Right. I've only heard of like. I'm like Dan Ugla is batting fifth. Dan Ugla, yeah, yeah, he he was a he was a good player. Cantu was actually a good player for a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Trying to, I'm just trying to think here. So, I'm thinking 2007 or 2008. <clears throat> 
Uh, we have some uh, guesses out there. Daily Sports Talk says 2003, Bubble Pug 2004, Colin 2007. That's about what I was. Daily thinking. Sports Talk with uh, actually two guesses. Uh, oh, uh, well, oh, 2003, mean, but then 2008. And uh, maybe you can't say that date in 2000, you know. Gotcha. July 27, so, 2008. Okay. Ryan says 2008. Well, that's got to be around the ballpark. Is I, 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 the, the thing in my head I'm trying to think of is when did Griffey Jr. go in the Hall of Fame? And I'm trying to go back five years from that. Oh, look at you. Look at you. I don't remember exactly when he went in. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying. Oh, I didn't even catch Edwin Encarnacion. That must be yeah. him. First got in the league too. Yeah. And even like Volquez. Wow, this is this is later than I was thinking. Because right? I was thinking like 2006 ish. Because I think Volquez started with the Reds. Yeah, and I'm guessing so did Encarnacion. Even Jay Bruce, you know. Yeah. Jay Bruce had to be pretty young in his run, too. They call me Bruce. They call me Bruce. <laughs> to I'll go, go a little different. I'll, 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 sorry, go ahead, I'll, I'll, Yeah, I'll agree. I'll go with Colin Duncan. I'll go with 2007. Seven. Okay. I've seen a lot of 2007, 2008, so I'll go 2009. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So I'm, guessing, I'm guessing this is like grip. This is the only thing significant I think of this is it's it's either like Griffey's like last game or Griffey hit like past somebody on the home run list. Okay. Wow. Um, You're, you I you are five hundredth. I don't think it's just five hundredth because I'm like, eh, I think you got a little you got a little more than that. As they say, Kevin, as what is the saying? Uh you're in the ballpark. Yeah, I know. It is actually uh, June 9th, two thousand eight. You guys were all around it. Angelo, I think you even said it at one point. Um, this is when Ken Griffey Jr. hit his 600th home run 600, um, wow. against, uh, it was in Florida, um, against Mark Hendricks Hendrickson. It was at Dolphin Stadium. So That's I think Joe it was, Robbie. that used to be like Joe Robbie Stadium. Joe Robbie, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, also pro player stadium. Yep. Uh, I had a chance to go to pro player. I think it was about this time too. Can you uh, say the orange ball? Can't you just say the orange bowl? <laughs> is that it? Was it the orange bowl? It was. Wasn't that the orange bowl? No, it was wasn't. It Robbie Stadium, or is that? I don't think stadium? it was. I think oh, it was a, a completely maybe? different facility. All right. No, oh, but it's Hard Rock Stadium now, or something like that. Oh, Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pro yeah. Player Stadium is actually Pro Player is actually an underwear brand. So I was, it was said it was named after underwear. So, uh, yeah, so this was the, his 600th home run um, in an era when, when 500 home runs it seemed easily uh, easy to attain. 600 is still the hollowed mark for most. Griffey Jr. is now uh, became the sixth player in Major League Baseball history to accomplish the 600 home run feat. So, um, big time. Actually, if, if you look at his 500th home run, he looks uh, lean and mean. Uh, he's uh, putting a little weight on here. I don't know if it's just baggy clothing, but twenty years. He's almost twenty years in, you know. Yeah. Because he, it was in '88. He actually played with the San Bernardino Spirit. That was like a really big thing. That's in, right. You know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was all in just podcast. Was in. It wasn't. Yeah, it okay. wasn't the Orange Bowl. It was a different facility. I remember because that's where like the that that's where like the Dolphins won the won the <laughs> World Championship in like '72 or something like that. Well, I just laugh that there's literally two different football stadiums. <laughs> You know, or the Orangeville got torn down and they built us something in its place. Oh, the oh. New Marlin Stadium is uh, on the side. That's what that's what it was. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, so um, yeah, good good job, guys. You guys were definitely um, in the ballpark, as it were. All right, so here is the second one. We're looking for the year. This oh, year I, between the I, Dodgers I, and Giants. Oh, oh. sorry, sorry, sorry Kevin. I, I, I hurt your feelings. Yeah, a little bit. That yeah, I I, I don't even remember that. I, I blocked that out of my head, obviously. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Um, Devon White at the top of the Dodgers lineup. That's yeah, that's a very that's interesting one. Great. Mark yeah. Gruzelonic, Sean yeah. Green. Sheffield, there you go. Uh, Sheffield, Devon. Beltre is at yeah, third. Yeah. So that, that says it right there. I mean, that, that kind of tells you, if you remember when Adrian Beltre, when he left the Dodgers, because yeah. I, I remember the exact year that he did that. Um I think I saw his last game as as a Dodger as well. It was in the playoffs. Ellis Todd Burr. Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Like that dot. Yeah. I mean, except for like Marvin Bernard, I'm like, there's some pretty, there's some pretty solid players in that Giants lineup yeah. too. It's just weird yeah. seeing Devon White leading off. I'm going the air. I'm like, 
he was leading off for the Angels in like the late eighties, you know That's what I mean? Right. And he was leading off for the Dodgers in I you know more than a decade later. Yeah, he was with Toronto too, eh? making all those great plays for Toronto. Very underrated uh, outfielder, I I yeah. believe. So Bubble Pug says uh, 98, um, <clears throat> 99, 2000. It's like, it's a basketball or hockey uh, uh, see, uh, guess right there. <laughs> or NBA, <laughs> yeah. It's the NBA NHL guess. That's good. right. I'm leaning a couple years later. There you go. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm 99. leaning a couple years later. Oh, my gosh. Kirk Ruder. Oh, my gosh. I just laughed. Yes. Seeing yeah. Thing. Doug Mirabelli is a great baseball name too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. I saw, I actually saw him in the minor leagues. I saw oh, is that there. right? I, I just remember his name. I don't remember what team he played for. I remember the announcer like Doug Mirabelle. Like they would never get Mirabelle. That's right. right. That's right. Mirabelle. So, Angela, right. I mean, this is this is seems to Come be. On, you, are here. you to have anything? This is this is your time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Colin, I'm I'm almost with you there, but I don't think it was 2001. What did you say, Kevin? Did you make a guess? I didn't make a guess yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I I mean well, I'm pretty. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going back on what I was thinking now. I'm, I'm doing oddly enough, head. the the name that's throwing me off the most here is Channel Park. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, that's the name that's throwing me off the most as far as narrowing it down to a year. Yeah, because it, um, it, I mean, because you think it's like maybe 90s, but like how long did he hang on? I don't remember. Right. I, I, don't, I don't think it's the 90s. I definitely think it's in the 2000s. Um, I'll go with 2000. 2000. It's funny because that's what I was, I was going to say in the year 2000. <laughs> in the year 2000. Because <laughs> the interesting names to me are Devon White and Kevin Elster. Because Elster came up in like 86, 87. I'm like, there's no way that guy was still playing in like 2003. Because that's mm. what I was thinking. I was thinking like 2003 or so. Okay. But I'm like, I'm going uh, to go a little different. I'll say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, let's go 2002. I'm not going to jump on okay. Cat. I'm going to go the year they, they made the World Series. Let's go okay. with that. And, and the not... answer is, it is actually opening day oh, 2000. Ah, Kevin just, had it. Like, Kevin like had it. I thought we are going to have some dual winners here. but I just yeah, don't I... like agreeing with him. I, I don't like ever agreeing. I'm like, no, let's just do something different for the sake of the show. Oh, well. Yeah, this is opening day uh, 2000. This is also the opening day of Pacific Bell Park. Oh, wow. The very first game and uh, the first Giants home run in their new ballpark. Nice. And uh, if you look in the uh, – actually, I'm going to put it in the playlist. Um, I didn't want to put the uh, the – playlist out there and with the answers and anything but there's an actually like when barry bonds hits his home run he kind of calculates um or, or talks about how bonds w wanted to you know go after willie may's record and and he's like try he does the math really quickly and he goes ah eh, we'll see if he does it so it's, it's kind of interesting to hear him talk about it do we um, know did that, did that first home run go in the cove it did not it did not um but he i th that season he did hit one into the uh in the splash zone. Um, yeah. Cause I'm sure it wasn't called McCovey's Cove yet. I don't know. What yeah. They right. It. Right. They hadn't, hadn't named it yet. And it's had like five names. I mean, it's Oracle park now, but AT&T oh, yeah. pack, pack bell. Um, but yeah, this was, um, where were you in, in 2000, Angela? Were you living in, or were you here yeah, by that I time? Was, uh, you know, that was 2000. I was a junior in high school. Wow. So sorry. So sorry to make you guys feel old. <laughs> oh, <junior> <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't two thousand. Get out of here! I can't even remember. How yeah, I was. I was, a, I was a junior in high school in two thousand, and I was working as a as a sales associate at Finish Line at the Weberstown Mall in Stockton. Right. And uh, April eleventh is actually my mother's birthday. Oh, look at that! See, I knew that. That's why I picked that. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yep. That's awesome. Um, See, meanwhile, Michael and I were getting our feet wet in the in the wrestling. I was working yeah, at the yeah. 
as a as a young, you know, 24-year-old back then, you know. That's right. I was actually celebrating 12 years out of high school and uh probably wrestling somewhere. Yeah, we were I most likely we were wrestling somewhere during that time. Oh yeah, this is when the our first wrestling school was opened in Anaheim. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, uh speaking of Barry Bonds, um oh. Uh, unfortunately we have uh, some bad news as someone passed away. We, we always end the show on somebody that baseball related that passed away. Uh, today it's, uh, Pedro Gomez who, uh, unfortunately died at, at 58. Uh, he was actually a vital part of the, uh, ESPN's coverage of Barry Bonds from 2005 to 2007, including covering Bonds, uh, home run chase, uh, yep. chasing Henry Aaron's, uh, record home run record in 2007. What I didn't know was, and this is interesting because, I didn't realize because I, I moved uh, from Phoenix to Los Angeles in 1997 that uh, Pedro Gomez started with the Arizona Republic in 97. So uh, right after that, the Diamondbacks started. And so he was probably involved with that. Um, it's always sad to see baseball people go um, because like, I don't, I don't realize this. Like there, there's people that I watch like on major league baseball network, ESPN, um, and I, I kind of take them for granted because they're just always there. Like, you know, and, yeah. and when you watch baseball tonight or, um, like Carl Ravage, like, it's like, like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really think of him, but it's like, I, I know who he is and I know what he's about. And if I saw him on the, on the, you know, walking, I'd be like, Oh, that's Carl Ravage or, you know, um, Heidi Watney, when we, uh, uh, John Talwar and I went to the all-star experience in, in San Diego and I'm like, Oh, there's Heidi Watney. And it's like, I was like, you know, cause she's with major league baseball network. And, and so like, you get to know these people just cause like, I mean, literally my, my, my TV is stuck on major league baseball network. And there's very few times when I switch it, um, only when like games are on ESPN or other on, um, you know, in LA, we have to switch, you know, to the, you know, the stations that they're on, on, on our cable. But, um, but yeah, but, but, Dodgers. yeah, Dodgers. Well, and angels too. Yeah. Luckily Dodgers. Have angels. yeah. Um, we're lucky to have it on our cable system as I find out. But, but the thing about Pedro Gomez is, is like, I'm like, I was really sad to see that he passed, passed away kind of out of the blue. And he had, I guess he had tweeted earlier in that day. Um, there was a, there was a tweet from a, a reporter. I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on her name, but she was like, you know, what do you miss about minor league baseball? And he, he like, he, he responded to it, everything. And then I, I, I responded to that same tweet, you know, saying like, you know, that, you know, I miss everything about it as well. It was kind of ironic that we had this kind of the same tweet. Um, but yeah, he, uh, it was really sad to see, uh, Arizona Republic is where I got all my baseball. I used to read the Arizona Republic growing up. Um, and I would have, uh, loved, I would have known about him more, but, um, but yeah, I only know him from ESPN. Interestingly enough, uh, he has a son named Rio who's in the Boston Red Sox organization. Um, he's actually here with the, uh, uh, Lowell spinners. Um, but he is actually with Salem now in he's a, that's a class A advanced of in the Carolina league for the Red Sox. And, uh, what I didn't know was that his son went to university of Arizona and, uh, I have a friend who lives in Omaha now. Uh, he, he, he actually reached out to me this morning. I didn't know this. His name is Andy. And he said that he met, um, and got to talk with Pedro, when his son uh, was at the college world series. Oh, and so his wow. son got to meet him. And so I thought that was really cool. And I, uh, I didn't realize like, it's, it's, it's funny how like, this is a small world, right? You know, it's all this like little baseball <clears throat> connections, you know, and it's like, like I very easily could have known Pedro Gomez and I just know his work. And uh, it's sad to see, you know, with all these people passing away, um, especially in baseball, but just, you know, in life in general, as you get older, but um you, you realize that like, I mean, this guy is, it brought not, me nothing but joy and it's really sad to see him go. So what, what do you guys just remember of Pedro Gomez? I actually don't have much to add. I, 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 you know, because I don't really have cable, you know, oh, my, interesting. My, 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 my knowing of him is just mostly just hearing through stories the last few days about him. And he's now he seemed to be like universally loved, you know, reporter, which that's hard to be in, you know, any sport, like, you know, cause you know, there's always gonna, you know, you're always gonna have managers quipping about, oh, this guy's saying this, this guy's saying that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't really have much else to add. I mean, I, I do remember him vividly, actually, recently, as of late, uh, being more into baseball and seeing his reports on on ESPN. But I, I vividly remember his coverage of Barry Bonds' home run chase, um, and 
uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I hope I'm not wrong on this, he won, he, would, he either won or was nominated for an Emmy uh, for an Emmy award based on his uh, coverage of the of the chase, of the home run chase, and um, I think really what what Pedro is going to be rem- remembered for most, and I've seen this in, in tweets and 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 a heartfelt acknowledgement about social media since his sudden passing on Sunday is just how good of a guy that he was. Um, it, it's a you know, great guy. Love, love, always love the conversations, uh, love the interaction, um, and love baseball. And those, yeah. uh, th- th- those rang true in almost each and every tribute that was posted across. So definitely a, a, a sad, a sad one and, and a sudden one, because I think Kevin, you mentioned he had tweeted earlier on Sunday too, correct? Yeah, I saw. Yeah, I, I saw that mentioned somewhere. I, I Michael just mentioned it, but I remember I saw that as well. And he was talking about like he just tweeted like that morning. Yeah, yeah. whatever happened. Obviously, it was really sudden. Which yeah, super sad to see. And I have to update my uh, master slide to make it twenty twenty one, not twenty twenty. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so Pedro uh, Gomez. yeah, salute cheers, cheers, Pedro yeah. Gomez. Yeah, cheers. Um, uh, so yeah, if, if you'd like to, uh, support us at the beer baseball blog, look us up on Patreon beer baseball, uh, look at our eBay store, beer baseball blog on eBay, our Etsy store, a beer baseball, uh, check us out and help us uh, and support us. If you want to go to our, uh, beer uh, backslash affiliates, there's a whole bunch of stuff there and you can help support us. Uh, here's all the spots on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch where you can find us. Uh, Kevin, anything you want to promote? Uh, I mean, if you want to see what I'm getting into, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lock and Lull. That's L O K N L O L L. Actually, uh, for those of you who are into like old punk rock, like the LA punk rock scene specifically, coming up at 7:30, there's going to be a show about the old LA punk rock scene on the Museum Home Videos Twitch page. I think uh, you just look up Museum Home Video on Twitch. And the whole show tonight, start seven thirty Pacific, is going to be all about the LA punk rock scene called Wild in the Streets. Looking forward to that. Right on, right on, Angelo. Yeah, so a couple a couple of things to plug. Uh, when I'm not here uh, or filming a beer and break video, you can find me on the Twitch stream of uh, Big Teach Forty Five playing Call of Duty Warzone uh, almost each and every uh, weeknight, Monday through Friday, uh, at eight PM Pacific Standard Time. So go ahead and like and subscribe on Facebook uh, Live as well as uh, Twitch uh, at Big Teach 45. Uh, please, if you haven't had an opportunity, go visit uh, our Beer Baseball Blog YouTube channel and check out episode one of Beer and Break with Angelo as I unbox 2020, a Panini Elite Extra Edition. Uh, and we got a ton of content in the pipe uh, coming through uh, for Beer and Break as well as a fun uh, retail run video. And uh, I'll be uh, filming a fun uh, mail day video here coming up soon. So a ton of awesome content. And I'm just going to put it out there into the universe with all our subscribers and viewers. I really want to do a, a beer and break with uh, 2021 Panini NBA hoops. And I've Ooh. been unsuccessful in finding uh, that product that was released last week out in the wild. So if you happen to come across or stumble across it at a Target or a Walmart, Please pick it up and send it to our PO box and mailing address listed on beerbaseball.com. I'd, I'd appreciate it. Um, I really want to unbox the product and see if I can pull a lamella ball autograph. And if you're able to do that, uh, Mike, we have some gifts we could send whoever. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely come up with something. That, right. So, you got it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Panini 21 uh, NBA. I've been on the hunt for that and have been unsuccessful in this last week. And I really want to do this video for you guys. So, uh, that's all I have. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, So for Angelo Trinidad and Kevin Lyon, I'm Michael Mondragon, and we will see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Good night, everyone. Take care. See you next week.